goodness, with face, pat, and tiz. Into my next topic, uh, ride a robble. Uh, <laughs> that's gonna be the motto for tonight. Uh, so yeah, man, I wanted to ask y'all and, and just get the conversation going on. Who do y'all, what decade, the 80s, 90s, 2000s, the arts, or yeah. Those four decades. Which one of those decades do y'all think had the best music? And when I say that, I mean like collectively, as in the major four buckets or genres of music combined. So the best rock, pop, hip hop, and R and B combined. Um, mm -hmm. You got to combine all four of them. If you combine all the all, all the aspects of music, I mean all the genres genres of music, I should say, like it makes it harder, um, because not everyone like is good in the same decade. Even so, like the pop, uh, I feel like the more the eighties pop music and stuff like that, that's more classic. You feel like you can put that eighties pop on and rock anytime, where some pop now is just more um like blase and it's just out there to be out there real quick and next week it ain't nothing so but when it comes to rap 80s rap to me sucked ass mm. <laughs> so no, you won't no, answer okay. that you won't answer that oh, come on nah. get down uh -huh, uh -huh. we got the brakes uh -huh, uh -huh. yeah no, I can't get, get broken glass <laughs> Nigga, I know that That's you won't answer that hip hop that make you lose your teeth no, that's just hip hop pointing out shit. I can see that myself. Broken glass Blood everywhere. Look. Everywhere. Uh, need to vacuum the carpet because it's floor on the floor. It's, I, I can do that shit. I mean, I don't like eighties rap. It was trash. It was put it was in, it, rap was in its infancy. So, I ain't I mean, never heard nobody say that they're rude. pointing out shit when they talk about eighties rap. That is hilarious. Is <laughs> everybody afraid to say it? Everybody want to be like, oh, we got dirty dishes. That nigga said dirty dishes. <laughs> it was the beginning, so you got to expect it. Like that is mean? hilarious. Yo. Right. Oh, fuck. To me, <laughs> to me, rap was in its greatest, like in the transition from the '90s to the early 2000s. You feel me? Like um, late '90s, more, more like more late '90s. Um, uh where you had the transition of more different styles of hip hop coming out. You didn't just have that one hurrah and observational rap. You had gangster rap. You had the conscious rap. You had the different aspects and the different genres coming out. So rap was in its teenage years and it was it was blossoming. So I feel like the nineties in the early two thousands was the best time for rap. But as far as pop, the best time for pop and stuff like that was like the eighties, man. Cause mm -hmm. I mean Come on, Hall and Oates. I mean, come on now. I mean, it's classics from the 80s, man. It's like classic, classic. Them, any song that you can take from Scarface is going to rock. True. I don't know what year you put that on, it's going to rock, man. But you take something like a Katy Perry song from three years ago and you who, like, who the fuck is, who the fuck is this shit? I don't want to hear this shit. I don't know, man. Fireworks go all the same yo. aspect. When say Gotta dim the lights. Let it shine. Cause baby, you're the fire. Oh, no. You, 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 no, you that ain't your shit. <laughs> you're not comparing Katy Perry to no 80s pop. Katy Perry get buried in the 80s. Baby, you're the fire. But then, are we talking about country music too? No, no. I, I, uh, okay. I, I don't even know. I mean, a lot. I'm of not. Country a, I'm not from certain. I'm not versed enough. Whole, yeah, yeah, I don't even know. That's why I kept it the shit that I was like, okay, these are the basic genres that all three of us would kind of have pop, an idea about. Pop, R and B, soul, and stuff like that. I'm going 70s, 80s, maybe. That's when everybody had like real feeling in it. 
I mean, like, we really had emotion. We really had, like, people were talking about some with substance, and it was just coming from a place of joy. You feel me, like, with the pop and stuff, and the soul, like, the, the, the soul music really touched your soul. You feel me, like, I can go put a 70s track on there, and I don't care what age you are. You can be in your teens, and that 70s music hit you. You sit there, let's go. You go, oh, shit. OG oh, on some real stuff right there, ain't he? But to the same instance, I put a, a R and B song on from like three, four years ago, and I'm like, man, this shit is all you talking about is sticking it in. I mean, it ain't no soul in this. Like, I can I can make some song about sticking it in. Come here, girl, let me stick it in to the beat. <laughs> <laughs> Come and, here, girl, let me stick it in. What the nigga? What? <laughs> Nothing but hell, from yo. Put it to the beat. Yo, put it to the beat. Shit. <laughs> Next up on Bill Cosby's greatest hits. But... <laughs> Come on, girl, let, let me stick it in. I got a deal. Come on, man. Like, put like, it. Crap. But that also comes with the age of uh, of the music because, I mean, like, pop, it, it, it won't in its baby years in the early 70s and 80s like rap was. So rap had to mature and get to that place where it could blossom and first flourish and get to that that real goodness of it, you feel me? Like in the way it was in the early '90s and mid 2000s, where the in the '70s and '80s, the other forms of music had already blossomed. They'd already been there, so they were already in there in their groove where people can find how to just get in that type of music and find a niche. Where rap, you were just trying to make it. Then to be a rapper, mm-hmm. you just trying to make it off what the next man did. It won't know on set niches and on set grooves where now you got your conscious rap, you got your mumble rap, you got your weird ass rappers who rap about just whatever. You got that's me. Rap, I'm you got Belgian rap. You got you got every different sector of rap now. So rap has grown. So I can, I don't think I can answer that question as far as just put all four of them into one one decade. Like yeah, this is the decade. All four of them because. Rap is so new, it didn't fall in with nothing else. So, I got you. Okay, Pat, you want to take a stab at it before I get into it? Um, I would, I agree, I agree with Faith mostly. Like, my favorite 90s was like my favorite 90s is what got me into rap or whatever. I was like, shoot, the first. And this is this is because I had an older sister. I ain't have an older brother. But the first rap song I ever heard was Push It from Salt and Pepper. That's like the first rap song <laughs> that I can remember. That was like, for real, that's like the first rap song. And that's because my older sister was playing it. <laughs> <laughs> that was I, don't, it. I don't even know why that's so funny, bro. So please understand. Like, I have no idea why that's funny. It's just, I <laughs> just imagine like, uh, a four year old Padawan in the crib. Pussy real good. The beat, you like, get up on this. Like, that's one of the greatest 80s beats. <laughs> like, it was so great. Cameron redid it. Like, come on, it was great. But he did redo it. Oh, man, mm-hmm. I forgot all about that song. Okay, yep, he showed up there. Yeah, that happened. Yep, yep. That was and a thing that happened, y'all. That was a thing that happened. Uh, a lot of things with Cameron is a thing that happened, and it's big, hilarious. Big, big things are going with him. But I think my favorite era of music would be the 80s, but not because of rap, but more like that Sade. Um, it was like a jazzy, spacey feel, like Denzel. Um, what's his name? Wankster. I know it's, I'm going to look this up, man, but it's, or whatever, it's one of my favorite, like, producers from the 80s or whatever, and I think, and like, as far as musically, 70s, 70s music is probably the all-time best music ever, because every piece of music that is out right now is basically based off 70s and 80s music, especially things from the 90s, like, like, there's still elements that they learned off of the 80s and 70s music that they bring in. It might be new technology, it might be new sounds or whatever. I will say that's the my the best thing about new music in the new era is just the sounds right now. Like the sounds are just like great. I wish I could 
we could take the sounds from this era and give it back to the artists in the 80s and see what crazy shit they come out with. But like um, at a at a base level, if uh, me just pressing play and hearing what I want to hear that sounds good to me or whatever, mm -hmm. I think that that 80s uh, jazzy, spacey sound, shoddy, chill sound is is where is that for me as far as music? Like I can listen to that all day. Oh, that's that's the name. His name is Dexter Wan Wansell, and he got this um he got this like like a lot of people sampled from him or whatever. Like mm -hmm. uh, like as far as rappers and stuff like that. But he got this like type of music is whatever that's like is. It's like jazz, but it it's a bunch of spacey sounding sounds. Like it's like um oh or whatever. Like it's funk music or whatever, but uh like it, it's is that and then you have like Parliament, like this still they're still remixing songs from the 80s and, and 70s and turning it turning into whatever twerk version. I know City Girls got some what was uh, the Torcolator song or whatever. They, yes. yes. And they basically took beats from the 80s and 70s. So it's got to be one of the greatest errors if they keep taking from it now. And I mean, now they're dabbling into the 90s era R&B and sampling it at too. And I'm not going to lie. That's like, as far as R&B goes, just regular R&B go, I think 90s kills it with as far as R&B. That's when R&B shined the most pretty mm. much like to me that just make as far as like if you if you go to like any party and they just playing like r&b or whatever majority of that is coming from the 90s and a little bit at the end of the 80s with key sweat and everything too they might start off with sure that. come on <laughs> 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 I did that just so I could get face to do that. <laughs> he be sounded just like Bobby in the background. We got something coming. <laughs> it's all good. It just come out of nowhere. Man, he, he did that. I love it. I love it. <laughs> he, he, he did that like, yeah, let I me mean, let let me remind people I'm in the background. <laughs> Bobby's still here, y'all. <laughs> but I will say the most fun, the most fun I've gotten out of music is the early 2000s because that's that's the 2000, that's the era where we did all our crazy shit together. Pretty much. So I'm, I I still, matter of fact, I still remember um, playing Undertaker, the the Ti song, and then and Chewy come along, make the hook tone, and then y'all start rapping, and then I. Whenever I get a chance, I'll rap at the end, pretty much. So that's just one of those, 2000s is just one of those moments where, like, I got a lot of memories, crazy memories with that music. So that's still going to be a place in my heart, pretty much. But if I'm sitting by myself and I'm just chilling and I want to go to another planet, I'm probably listening to, like, 80s shot eight, pretty much. Okay. Um, I think for me, it's definitely the 2000s, um, from 2000 to 2010. Um, I feel like on the R&B tip, it was still the era of people still make, you still had choices in R&B. You had fucking music, but you also had love songs as well. Mm -hmm. Um, it hadn't all the way switched to we just talking about fucking. It was still kind of some of that old era still. Um, mm -hmm. it also gave us some of some of my favorite R and B artists like Neo and them. Like you know, what I mean, like for me, those I I really rock with their music. Like Usher kind of hit his groove around that time. Confessions and mm -hmm. stuff started to come out. Like so, we had like just some big time R and B in that point. We also that got. Was Right. We also got rock taking it to a new level when it comes to stuff like Linkin Park and um, uh, even Limp Biscuit when they first came out, that fusion of like hip hop and rock started to happen in that time. And I'm a big fan of that. Um, even 
bands like Creed and shit. Like I think that that style of rock started the power ballads type thing started making a comeback, and I really like that type of rock. So I'm a big fan. Um, and then with hip hop, you had like it was you had so many different genres all flowing at once. You had the crunk movement starting. You had the snap movement during this time. You had the rock star movement during this time. You had the- Oh, they like go rock. Right, you had uh, 50 Cent making his impact on the game. You had Kanye Kanye coming into his own during this time. Like so much- The mixtape era. Right, so much Mm. that like we now look at as like our classic hip hop moments was happening during that 2000 to 2010 period. So like, I feel like out of all four genres, it's like the time where like, there's no time where like all of them were equally as great, but I would say like the closest time we got for me is like them them, them 2000 to 2010, that decade, like I feel like Every genre was just doing something really cool at the same time. But yeah, I, I can't. I can't lie. The two thousand era was one of the greatest times of my life. I ain't even gonna lie. Man, it was pretty. It was pretty special. At but even time, just from a musical standpoint, it was pretty special. And it was the perfect time for me to start growing my dreads because Wayne was on a rampage, and he had that one song, "Lollipop." And every time we go to the club. Guess who gets attention? All the single ladies. All the single ladies. <laughs> Shut up. Oh, <laughs> uh, face must be must be that took a break. He he used to be right there on that one. Oh. <laughs> but you all want to see some amazing stuff. If y'all were ever around us at a club. And the right song comes on, and for some reason, Tiz wanted to dance battle someone. It is the most epic shit. I don't know if you re- remember that. Uh, what was it Club Mystiques? It looked like an old Golden Corral, but we went in there. It was always a group. But some somehow, some way, you ended up dance battling somebody. Yep. It was amazing. <clears throat> yep, it 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 happened a lot. It it did happen a whole lot. And I, I, I realized was somebody. I was really big into that back then. Yeah, <clears throat> even when people didn't even want a dance battle, I, I battled mm-hmm. people that didn't even know that they were in a <laughs> dance battle. They were just enjoying themselves at the club with their friends, and I'm sitting there battling the fuck out people. Motherfucker, you gonna, I'm gonna eat your head and spit it out, head. and then I'm gonna shit it, and then I'm gonna kick it over here. And yeah, it was it was crazy. Oh, that shit move was hilarious. If they had <laughs> had like if they had had like a true life. Of like, uh, I'm addicted to battling. <laughs> that would have been me. I can't stop battling people. I just keep walking up to them, break doing break dance moves and shit. Yeah, it was bad. But on the other hand, it did it, it it did contribute to a lot of us getting the right type of attention back then from the ladies. I'm just saying. I did, I did spark off some groups of girls that wanted to come over just because I was over there, you know, eating and shitting somebody's head out at the moment. Next thing you know, everybody going home with a little poo-poo. Little poo <laughs> <laughs> Little poo-poo, you know, little poo-poo. Little poo-poo platter. You know. I might have been pop-locking it. I was fucking a lot back then. <laughs> Doing a uh, dance mating call. <laughs> I recall some of my dance battles having you end up on the floor with girls, uh, Pat. Yeah, that happened. That happened. Like, it, no, yeah. Lil Wayne made a song called Lollipop, and it changed my life personally. <laughs> <laughs> ain't even gonna lie. <clears throat> when, when, lie. When, when locks meet opportunity. Yes. Less. And I'm not mm-hmm. ugly, so it works. You know what I'm saying? Like, it might have been other dread dudes, but I'm not ugly. Those other ones were a little harsh in the face. Well, every guy is harsh in the face to me, yeah. but 
Uh, I'm by comparison. You know what I'm saying? I got my mom's looks. <laughs> <laughs> I got my mom's looks. <laughs> <laughs> That is funny for reasons I'm not quite sure, but I, I don't know I why it. either, but it's hilarious. Yes, yes, I got my mom's looks. <laughs> my mom's gorgeous, so I don't care the best. I ain't mad at you, Playboy. <laughs> Salute to the queen. But yeah, man, Pod Squad, y'all tell us who y'all favorite, uh, which y'all favorite decade is, or which y'all think the best decade for music was. And when I say music again, not your favorite genre of music, but objectively, kind of just like out of all of the decades and all of the genres, like the best mu- decade for music overall. Um, what y'all think? Let us know down in the comments below. And yeah, man. <laughs>